Sand, surf, and waves. Carolina anoles, Spanish moth, sanderling sandpipers, boat-tailed grackles, and so much more. Wide sandy beaches, a fishing pier, an inlet where a river comes in, backwater marshes. This is Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. And it's only five hours from where I live in the Appalachian Mountains. And it's such a treat for me to come from the mountain scenery to the ocean and see all the different things that live in this habitat. Today's episode is going to be about an organism that lives in the intertidal region, in between low tide and high tide. And they're in constant movement. And this is the coquina clam. They are fascinating with a myriad of colors and a fascinating life history that just never stops. They're constantly moving up and down the beach. So stay tuned for this episode on the coquina clam and their fascinating biology. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. The scientific name of the coquina clam is Donax variabilis. And the variabilis in the species name, it's aptly named because they are so variable in their colors. They seem to occur in every color of the rainbow. Coquina clams inhabit the intertidal zone. It's that zone between low tide and high tide and they're constantly moving up the beach as the tide comes in and down the beach as the tide goes out. Coquina clams are bivalves. That means they have two shells. And typically we think of bivalves like clams and mussels as being very sedentary. I really want to emphasize the point that these guys are mobile. They live a very dynamic life. These tiny bright colored clams are filter feeders. They filter out algae and detritus, which is organic particles or decaying organic particles that are suspended in the water column. And what better place to filter in a place where the waves are constantly stirring up this detritus and making it available in the water column. Just like other bivalves, they have two siphons, an in-current siphon and an ex-current siphon. Through the in-current siphon, they take in water, and inside are tiny hair-like cilia that are also in constant motion. And with a little bit of mucus, they sweep these particles into the stomach. So the coquina clam plays a critical role in taking material that's unavailable up the food chain and turning it into the very nutritious flesh of these mussels. So coquina clams play a really important, vital role in the food chain. Taking particles that are unavailable as food up the food chain and converting it into nutritious biomass, the mussels in these shells that so many predators seek out. Coquina clams are a primary food source for a myriad of organisms on the beaches. Some of these include pompano fish, whiting, boat-tailed grackles, sanderling sandpipers, all sorts of migratory birds, and the endangered red knot, where this food is very important on its critical migration journey. With every wave, these clams are extending their muscular foot, either pulling themselves down into the sand or coming to the surface to only to be caught by the next wave and pulled farther up the beach as the tide comes in. Each time they settle for a moment, they extend their siphons and begin filtering. As the next wave comes by, they'll either move up the beach or they'll dig down into the sand to take cover. It's amazing watching these. You can walk down the beach and look for these sparkling, shiny, beautifully colored shells, and they appear in colonies. You may walk 10 yards on the beach and not see one, and then all of a sudden, you'll be surrounded by them in this swash zone. That swash zone is this place where the waves are breaking right on the beach. 
coquina clams are also vital in bio biology as an indicator species. Indicator species are species that can tell us by their presence or absence if an ecosystem is healthy or unhealthy. Seeing these coquina clams here is awesome because this tells me that the water quality here is excellent. Coquina clams are very sensitive to pollution. Coquina clams, because of their mobility and because they live near the surface right on the beachfront, are particularly vulner vulnerable to beach restoration projects where sand is pumped in from other places and they get buried. So another reason that a beach may lack these is because it's been recently restored with sand pumping and all the coquina clams were buried. And so it'll take some time for their populations to regenerate. Coquina clams also have a kind of stone named after them. Geologically, the word coquina is used to describe a calcareous, loosely assembled stone that's made up of millions and millions of years of deposits of clam shells. In fact, the oldest masonry fort in the United States, Castillo de San Marcos, was a large Spanish stone fortress that was built 315 years ago. It was never penetrated. Coquina stone was the perfect stone to repel cannon fire. Uh, because it's not super hard, it would just pretty much absorb cannonballs without shattering. And some of the walls on this castle were 17 feet thick. This castle was never breached by the enemy. So the next time you go to the beach, walk down the beach and look for coquina clams moving up and down in the surf zone. These ones are relatively small. Most of them are less than a quarter inch in size, but they'll grow up to be maybe three quarters of an inch or an inch across. You can find the beaches littered with these shells that have probably been eaten by various bird species or crabs or the myriad of predators that eat them. It's just a fascinating group of mollusks just constantly in motion, opening, closing, moving, filter feeding, shifting with the sands. So on your next visit to the beach, I hope you'll enjoy finding these and understanding more about what you're seeing and what these guys are doing. Well, I hope you enjoyed this episode about the amazing Coquina clam here seaside at North Myrtle Beach. Remember, if you like what I share, please subscribe to my channel, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers, and I still answer every comment that I get. So thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.